Hi there, my name is Amy and I am Make Art, Ride Bikes, and today my topic is the pose flat back, which is not meant to be flat, it's not meant to be a filler, it's a really muscular place to get you to other places, but not a filler, not necessarily transition, a really beautiful pose all on its own, um, but it's not, not quite flat, not quite cat. So, you want the strength, the roundness of a cat pose, but not quite that round. The chronological pose that would come after flat back in a sun, something like a sun salutation would be a plank pose. So much like in my last tutorial where I had um, pointed out that downward dog is plank, flat back is also plank. And you're creating all of these muscular, really hot holds in your body so that your upward dog is that much more profound, that much more open, that much more of your spine moving into the chest wall, the front wall of your body. So before you get to something like upward dog, why not bounce your spine bones a little farther back in your body, so more flexed, more cat pose in nature. So the same things apply from my last tutorial. Fingers latched together. If you practice uh, just an effort of pulling your hands apart, to blowfish your rib cage nice and wide. What that does is turn on a few muscles that are generally a little sleepy, things like your serratus anterior, your intercostal muscles. So your rib cage gets bigger, wider, more profound, and it becomes a better mattress for your shoulder blades to be held on to glide over. So this can be your first <clears throat> lesson in getting that middle back puffed. I don't mind that word, puffy. You have a puffy, big middle back in your flat back pose. So let your hands pull apart without ever breaking apart to get that armpit tension. And then in flat back pose, your arm bones, your humeruses, your upper arm bones are externally rotated to give you space and to just sit the, the arm bone within its joint space so that you're ready to take weight when you do go into that plank pose. So you want them externally rotated, just makes things cleaner. And same thing with your upper upper thigh bones. They are externally rotated. I call it a hip crease smile, but just that motion with my hands, it's more of an M. So my right hip is rolling out to the right. My right side butt cheek is taking the strength and the weight. My left one is rolling to the left. So everything is widening out to the sides, getting stronger. Arguably, it's totally doable, but it sounds abstract the knee end of your femur, your thigh bone, is rolling a little bit inward, just mega tension. Inner knees pulling in, inner thighs pulling in, outer thighs rolling out. I'll help you with that with a couple of self-assists. So we'll start working our right side body, right thigh bone. I'll turn to my side, uh, bend your knees, just bend your knees, perhaps as in a chair pose. Feet close together but put your left hand between your knees. And that's what I had just referenced. This is the, the roll in of the inner thighs. Or if you, if you can't go for that internal rotation, um, maybe you're okay with adduction. So anything moving towards center is an adduction. Your thighs, your inner thighs move towards center against your left hand. Your knees have a muscular squeeze on your left palm print right now. Use your free right hand to put your thumb into your hip crease. You can sit down more and let that thumb really palpate, really mush into the, the meat of this quad right, right at the top of your thigh. Your remaining four fingers can wrap the outer hip down. And just remember this feeling, tension in the knees, space a muscular spread in your right outer hip. So keep doing that if you can. Remembering, remembering. Okay, keep that sunk into the body, slowly stand up. <clears throat> and then you'll work the right arm into an external rotation. So you can bring your arm out in front of you, right arm straight, thumb sticking up. So right now the whole arm is externally rotated for simplicity. I'll play with that in a second. <clears throat> Left hand, you can put the mid of your hand right on the inside of your arm. And your remaining four fingers can wrap out to the right. So it's the same thing as your hip. Your thigh is smiling to the right. Now you're rolling this right bicep energy almost as if it could meet the tricep. So it's going wide. 
and a little bit, a uh, little bit of that force down to the floor. That was a, a lesson from last episode as well. So your arm bone pulls down to get the tricep on, but your muscle, your skin rolls out and right. Now, if you can manage and keep that with your your left hand rolling your bicep out. Now you can internally rotate or roll your palm, your forearm down. And then realistically in flat back pose, you're doing this. And then all of a sudden, bada bing, bada bang, this is plank standing up. So as you force your arm generally down with this bent wrist and use your left hand to facilitate that outward rotation of musculature of the upper arm, the humerus. As, as per practice before, Try out while standing a front of the rib cage down, middle back strength. So I'll disintegrate. That's me sticking my chest out, losing some of my middle back flexion. And then rib cage down. This is what it looks like to have that middle back shape while managing the external rotation of arm. <clears throat> so if I just keep my arm in this orientation, and find flat back pose with that single arm. Things stay the same. Bicep rolling out, right thigh rolling out. You can put your left arm in here to self assist again and push back against it. So your head is forced towards the top of your mat. I'll help you through that on the other side. And of course, don't forget the space between your blades is lifted up. Calmly come up. <clears throat> I'll turn around, I'll swap out sides. Let's mush the right hand between the knees. So your knees will bend to make that doable. Hop the hand between them, give that squeeze. So a straight up inward squeeze is just referred to as adduction, moving towards center line with your thigh bones. Left free hand, the thumb hooks the, the hip crease. And then you pull, the, pull that flesh, that tissue, that muscle wide to the left and a little bit down. Even here, I didn't do this on the other side, but it is fun to squeeze into your hand, let the legs go straight, and then you're in a suspended flat back pose. <clears throat> your torso stuck out from your hips. <clears throat> I'd recommend trying this, feels pretty strong. <clears throat> Guts up, top of the head forward, middle back nice and big. Okay, to do your arm exercise on this side. You come out, you stand up. You put your left arm out in front of you at chest level with thumb up. So the whole arm is externally rotated in this orientation. <clears throat> your right free helping hand can smack right onto the, the inside, the inner lining of your left arm. And then use the, the palm to fully wrap the bicep wide to the left and really maintain that. You can continue that out helpful outward rotation with your right hand helping that. Turn your working palm, your left palm down. Bend the wrist back. You can push into this <clears throat> forward left hand and pump backwards with your middle spine. Other things you can do is remind that front rib cage to chop down so your middle back explodes backwards. You could use this free right hand to karate chop your arm. And then as for the other side, I can do that from the air. So I manage my outward rotation of my left arm, my outward rotation in my left thigh. And then if you just tip over and hold your shin and push your head forward and pull your rib cage into your spine, there you are, flat back. All right, I'll show it with the blocks and then put all that together. I love teaching it with blocks because it makes your hands serious. And if your fingertips are serious, it sort of inspires the rest of the arm line, the shoulder blades to be very connected, very complete. So I like big toes together. <coughs> blocks straight underneath the shoulders. And then starting out with widespread hands, nothing wrong with that. So your fingertips hanging off the end of the tall blocks. That'll teach you a bit about push-pull. So with wide open hands, push down into your blocks. It also gives you some space to ballet the top of your head to the top of your mat. As your handprints push down into the blocks, your middle back pushes up and away from the blocks as shown. And then of course, little knee bends. I could uh, 
even here I could afford to bend my knees a bit just to wake up my, my hamstring so my quad's not taking everything. If you wrap your fingers, it just gets spicy. The arms might feel a little bit more serious about their ability to, to wrap, as you had shown in your own self-assist. Guts up, middle back up, such as flat back pose. <clears throat> Eyes are down. I'll hop these blocks out of my way and just show you flat back pose with the uh, hands on my shins, so I haven't really moved very far. There it is. Then when I'm teaching a sun salutation, I prefer to not forward fold. So my rib cage is on my spine, my middle back is big, head is forward, you can push your head into your hand. So I prefer to not forward fold because the top half of my body is already in plank. So you should just go to plank which looks like this. Bend your knees until you can get those hands down. Step into a plank. And then chaturanga or low plank is plank with, up, with your elbows bent. So nothing changes in your upper body. And then here, you finalize that thoracic extension you've been craving in your upward dog. After you've done all of the work, in your strong, strong, strong flat back pose. That's the idea, that's the concept, that's the inspiration that I work with. So I hope that you try on making your flat back pose less flat, not so flat. Thank you, enjoy.